hey, Accelerated Algebra, make sure you've tried these problems already once and written your work in your notebook. And now as you watch this video, make sure that you take notes on anything that you didn't get correct the first time and then use your notes to get 100% on your second attempt. Okay, our first problem is an inequality. A couple of reminders about inequalities here. First, we've got open circles when we have less than or greater than, and we have closed circles for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. If we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, we'll swap the inequality sign. So I distributed the negative and now I'll combine like terms. Here I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 1, so I'm going to swap this inequality sign. So t is greater than or equal to negative 7. You've got a hint here about finding the inverse. So remember that if we write this as y equals 1 third x minus 2, to find the inverse we swap x and y. So I'm going to start by writing x equals 1 third y minus 2, and now I just solve for y. And here's my inverse function, so f inverse of x, 3x plus 6. So remember the domain is the x values and the range is the y values. Open circle tells us that things are not included. So if I'm looking at the domain, the smallest x I see is negative 4. The biggest x I see is 3. So my domain should be negative 4 less than x less than 3. Both open circles, so I know those are less than and not less than or equal to signs. The range is just a little different, though, because the lowest part on the range is right here. And now that point is on the curve, so that is included. So when I go to do this, I'm going to have negative 2 is less than or equal to y. But the highest y here is the 4. So that's just a less than 4 because of that open circle. So choice B gives me the exact thing I want. Okay, so if we're going to solve by elimination, remember that's where we multiply one or both equations by something and then try to add or subtract and eliminate. So this says um, we want to eliminate the y terms. So looking at these y terms, I can see that I could get them to cancel out if I multiplied the second equation by negative 2. Because if I do that, I would get 4x plus 4y equals negative 10. And then that top equation, 3x minus 4y equals 8, that stays the same. You can see here that these y terms would in fact cancel out. If we multiply the second equation by negative 2 and then add the equations, that was the thing that canceled out the y's. Okay, now this question asks about solving by substitution. So we want to substitute for either the x or the y. And you could solve this first equation for x and then plug in for x, but this is already solved for. So we can take this whole expression and put it in the place of y. That's probably the easiest thing to do, so let's see if any of these choices show that. So choice A here shows doing 2x plus 3 times the value of the expression for y, so negative 2x minus 1 equals negative 5. Now this asks you to just complete the previous problem and actually solve using the substitution method. So we use that first step that we already said. Once we get our x value, we just plug that in to get our y value. So my solution is 1 half negative 2. And these are written in decimal, so that's here, letter B. We've got a system of equations graphed below. I only see one line, so let me look carefully at this system here. I notice if I take this top equation and I solve for y, that it is the same as the other equation. So these are overlapping lines. Every point on this line is a solution to both equation. So there are infinitely many solutions, but not everything is a solution. So there's no solution that's not true. Only one solution that's not true. Not all real numbers are solutions because things that aren't on the line aren't solutions. 0, negative 3, well that's this point right here. That's on the line, so that's a solution. 2, negative 1, that's that point right there. These are two of the infinitely many solutions. That's true. Here we've got a system of equations, but this time we've got parallel lines. So if there's no intersection, then we have no solution. All right, so we know it's one of these no solution answers, and then we just have to pick the correct equations. It looks like this goes up 1 over 3, and on your version there, it says 1 third. Okay, if this is going to have no solution, when we solve by elimination, 
we're going to have to get uh, something that doesn't make sense. So, like, 0 equals 5, or 0 equals 2, or 3 equals 7. Something that's not true. So how can that happen here? If we multiply the top equation by negative 3, we would see that we would get negative 6x plus 15y equals negative 30. And then my bottom equation will be 6x plus by equals 9. If we go and add these together, we need everything on this side to cancel out, which means this b needs to be negative 15. For this one, we're just trying to find the, sy the system of equations that models this situation. So we've got a 20% acid solution and a 70% acid solution, and we want a 50% acid solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a equation that's about just total volume. So I'll have x be the volume of the 20% and y can be the volume of the 70%. Okay, um, so all together, when I add those two volumes to get together, I want 20 ounces. So that should be one of my equations. There are a few that have that answer. The second is I want to make something about the the amount of acid. So I've got 20%, 0.2x, 20% of the vo total volume there. And then I've got 70% of the volume of the other. And then the tricky part is you have to realize that we want 50% of these 20 ounces. So if I multiply this out, I would get 0.2x plus 0.7y equals 10. Um, and so that's this set of equations here. Okay, last one. Uh, we've got a plane traveling to Seoul and back. Each way is 6,000 miles. The way there is with the wind. So the speed is the plane plus the wind, and it took 10 hours. So remember, rate times time equals distance. So that's my rate. If I multiply it by my time, 10 hours, I should get my distance. And then the same thing's going to happen here, except here the wind's working against me. So my rate is the plane's speed minus the wind. That's why it takes longer, equals 6,000. Awesome, great drive, great job. Give this one more try if you need to to get your 100%.